How's it going everybody? I got another video for you. Sorry for the long wait. A lot of things came up. A lot of distractions. So anyway, uh, I want to thank you for your financial support. Uh, keep it coming if you can. Uh, I got a lot of things planned, like I said. I got a lot of things written. I got so many things written it's unbelievable but um, editing all this stuff and organizing it is a lot harder than writing it and that's why it takes me forever I got a lot of stuff that's almost ready to go but it's like about 75% done you know what's, what's left is maybe a little bit of writing and then tons of editing and organizing that goes along with it i got to organize all these thoughts so they kind of flow together as opposed to just uh free association i mean that's the style that i do free association but it does have to have some structure to it and so anyway um thanks again for your uh donations and i was just thinking that um um you know i have about I don't know, 1,700, 1,800 subscribers. And um, uh, a lot of you guys go out and you spend a dollar a day on a coffee, right? And what do you get for a dollar? You get like maybe half a cup of coffee. So, and that's every day. Some people do that every day, right? I mean, what's a dollar a day, right? And um, It's 9 o'clock. So what I was thinking is um, if you could, um, um, every subscriber that I have, if you're a subscriber, it means that you kind of enjoy what I do and, and you think it's um, uh, substantive what I do and useful for you. And um, if you were to every subscriber was to just send me one dollar a month one just one dollar a month I mean I'm worth a dollar isn't that right am I am I worth a dollar a dollar a month yeah I'm worth a dollar a month uh, <laughs> so that's an idea you know a dollar a month by PayPal and you have Alex coming to you and doing you uh, doing all kinds of crazy topics for you um, from real life in real time uh, no fabrications no fantasy on this channel no bullshit on this channel all right so um, I'm all exposed here for you see I'm not hiding don't hide if you got something to say show your face give me your name let's talk uh don't go on people's channels and just defecate defecate anonymously like a public toilet don't do that that's you have no guts if you do that you're just a gutless little piece of shit and you know it you know inside right so don't do that just got something to say even if it's uh criticism uh say it but show your face and give your name how's that and uh the internet will be a much more friendlier and safer place is what i think all right enough of the um organizational part of the video now let's get on to this. This is a this is a, a big one, a long one. If you think these videos are too long, just don't watch them. I mean, how's that? I mean, no one's forcing you, right? Uh, these are lectures, and uh, I've spent a lot of years in university, so it's kind of like in my background to uh, uh, listen to lectures, give lectures. That's what they are. So. Smart women can use this unforgiving dissection of female nature on my channel in all of its ugliness to gain an understanding 
of both female nature and male nature. Through the eye of the male and through male sexuality. Isn't that a good value? It's a good value for a dollar a month, isn't it? Yes, very good value. <laughs> and uh, so smart women could come to this channel and use this information to improve their relationships, improve their lives, improve themselves. And they can do this from the from behind the eyes of the male, from the male perspective. Now, isn't that valuable, right? And through the understanding of male sexuality, I mean, that's what that's what is exposed here on this channel is male sexuality, the way the male views things through his own sexuality. If there's any males left, that is. There's maybe just a few of us, but we are male. Um, and we actually show our faces, give our names, you know, that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. You know, back back the way men used to be, you used to be like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you guys, some of you guys are too young to remember what, what men, men were like, yeah, yeah. When men, you know, before the smartphone thing, yeah, before the, before the little girly push button thing yeah yeah before that they were men real men uh, so the female can watch us through male sexuality and through the acknowledgement of the flaws of their own female nature okay so this is what it takes for a woman to improve herself and to rise up to a higher level than what we expect of women these days and um, <clears throat> you know without being controlled by their own female nature because women a lot of their behaviors pretty well beyond their control that's how powerful female nature is um, and male nature too but in a very different way a female will reluctantly and with great difficulty be able to objectively see and morally admit to her female nature she will refuse to judge herself Women don't want to be judged. You judge a woman, that's it. You're the biggest douche in the world. How dare you? Women are supposed to be angelic and innocent and moral and diplomatic and intellect intelligent, measured and 500 other adjectives but we know that that's not the case we know that it's all an act it's all a disguise it's a mask and a masquerade it's in one word deception Everything they do is by deception. Nothing is real. And they're perfectly fine with that, with not being real. Now, a real man would lose his honor, would not be gratified knowing that he's a fucking fake. That's the difference. See? So, she will refuse to judge herself. It cuts right to her self-esteem. And if you've ever had the opportunity to live with a woman, you know all these things. You may not have articulated it before, but I'm basically telling you 
confirming to you what you already believe. That's what I do. Now, if you have no experience with women, then what I tell you goes right over your head. You don't know what to make of this. It's just creepy shit to you because you've never experienced it. And you probably never will. And that's sad. You have to get in to the rink and get your ass kicked to know what it feels like and to learn what it is, what life is like. You can't read it on the internet. It's got to come from experience. So, she knows no other way of behaving and she will not permit herself to be accountable to the immorality and the insensitivity of her shameful nature. She will not permit herself to be accountable to what she knows is shameful. She knows it's shameful. But just can't act any other way. It's instinctual. It's all she knows. But she knows it's shameful. She will do... So it's a very perplexing way to live, to be a woman, right? It's a conflict it's a constant conflict and that may be the root of their most of their problems and the way they act the way they do is because they're always under constant conflict let me tell you something this is an important line coined right here women walk the fine line between gain and shame. A fine line, there's a fine line that women walk between gain and shame. To gain is to be in shame, morally. So she will do everything at her disposal use any defense mechanism, disguise or conceal and disassociate herself and deflect any moral, ethical liability of her primal proclivities. She will deflect any moral or ethical liability of her primal proclivities. This deflection, now here, this is the key word in this video, deflection. The mechanism of, def of deflection in the female, the mechanism of deflection. This deflection of accountability is the foundation of her behavior and what defines much of the underpinnings of female nature. The impetus which engenders deflection is her victimhood status or claimed victimhood status. Perpetually playing the victim role for her is imperative in achieving deflection of accountability as well as detection and discernment of her true self. Her true self. The female lives under constant threat of exposure. And uh, with the fear of being discovered for being what she really is. Much of her energies are spent disguising her true identity and her true objectives. Her true identity and her true, obje true objectives have to be, they must be disguised as being moral. Now this is, takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of time. 
it takes a, takes a lot of intellectual and moral insincerity, emotional insincerity. It takes all of that for her to hide who she really is. That's why I'm saying don't fucking hide. Because you'll be like a bitch. You are like a bitch if you're hiding. What, what, are you, what the fuck are you hiding from? Jeez. Oh. The female lives under constant threat of exposure and with the fear of being discovered for being what she really is. Much of her energies are spent disguising her true identity and her true objectives. Her directionality is not morally dignified and requires much moral indiscretion to get the job done. Let me read that again. Her directionality is not morally dignified. We know that. And requires much moral indiscretion. A lot of moral indiscretion to get the job done. The job that she wants done, which, where she wants to go. It takes a lot of fucking deception on her part to get that done. And to get where she wants to go. And they know exactly where they want to go. Don't kid yourself. A guy doesn't. A guy wants emotional closeness, wants to be validated. It's also called love. A guy wants to be nurtured. Blah, 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 blah. Everything your mom, if you had a mom, if you had a caring mom gave you. But that's not a woman is looking, what a, what a woman is looking for. See, there's the inequity between the two. That's not what a woman is looking for. The woman is really adamant and conclusive as to where she truly wants to go. And she's willing to get into an exchange. And that, my friend, is the whore. In today's secular Western society, the female has no checks and balances. There is no judgment of female nature. You go to the gym, what does it say on the fucking wall? It says, no judgment zone! Who do you think they're pandering to and catering to? All those privileged, entitled bitches who don't want anybody to criticize them and make them accountable for who and what they are. Underlying, that's what it is. It encompasses something much greater in scope than... I don't know, have you ever heard of men laughing at women's thighs for being too fat or something? I've, I've never, who, who, who is the time for that? Who, who'd, who'd want to do that anyway? I mean, anybody in the, in the gym who is trying, it doesn't matter if they're morbidly obese. I mean, it gets my respect. And I'm sure it gets respect for most of you. But that, that's not what it's about. It's about judging women for their nature. That's what it's about. And they're deadly afraid of it. And that's why my work is important. Because it exposes women. It undresses them. It shows you women in the nude. Their true naked self. And that's what they're deadly afraid of. 
accountability has been abandoned as she is given every legal, socioeconomic, and moral advantage in society. Think about it. Think about how they get jobs. Think about the legal system. Think about the media. Think about the entertainment world. They're all catering to females. Or what passes these days for females. Most women are ugly these days. And the uglier they are, they more, the more they need affirmative action and artificial bolstering and support for who they are or to hide who they are. The uglier they are, the more they demand it, the more they need it. Good looking women don't need feminism. In fact, it's self-defeating for them. Uh, the female sociopath does not need feminism, in case you didn't realize that. It's a very important point. Only specific women use feminism as a tool. A tool to gain dominance, importance, and attention, which they would normally not gain given their own virtues because they don't have them. Uh, so they're giving, sorry, they're given every legal, socioeconomic, and moral advantage. Uh, female nature in all of its scope is exalted while simultaneously the male is disparaged. Female dominance is both legal and fashionable. Female hegemony, which is a fancy word for dominance, and rule, um, is both legal and fashionable. The female is given license to run her nature rampant and to be rewarded and praised for it. Now, uh, a lot of dumb fucks, uh, they leave, uh, you know, they leave a, a defecation comment on my channel and uh, they say, oh, it's not female, it's not women that's the problem, it's government. And then there's some real smart fuckers out there who take the Bible as an example. And they say, well, it's female nature hasn't changed since Adam and Eve. It's biblical. And it's powerful. And it hasn't changed. Female nature hasn't changed since the very first woman was created. And her first act was an act of deception and manipulation. Hey, whoever those dudes were that wrote the Bible, you can't be wrong, even if you're religious or not. This is profound writing, profound storytelling, profound wisdom. And it doesn't really have to have anything to do with religion. Um, it relates to all religions. It relates to everywhere in the world universally it relates to every single moment in time of history women have not changed even as one of my viewers has recently stated the woman gave in to the serpent and man gave in to the woman. Re 
right in Genesis, at the creation of mankind. It's still going on till this day. It's something definitely spiritual. If that doesn't define female nature, I don't know what does. It goes right back to day one. What is the culprit? Where does deception all come from? It's not government, it's not society. It's not anything in the modern world. It comes straight from female nature. At the very beginning, in the Garden of Eden, she made a deal with the serpent. A woman was born immoral and a woman knows no other way to act. But probably more now than ever, they are unchecked and rewarded for exhibiting the worst part of their female nature, the worst aspects of it. And the degenerates in our society are doing it. They're the ones who are exploiting women at the same time and exalting them. And women are wallowing in it. Let me explain further. The male has become increasingly indispensable and replaceable. Male worth, male value has plummeted as the state and commerce take the male to be a reliable constant and therefore dismissible for consideration. And his societal maintenance is unnecessary. It is unnecessary to do anything for males because males are going to be there. No matter what. No matter how much they're stepped on, they're going to be there. They can't complain. Males can't complain. And the manipulators, the G degenerates in our society, worldwide, know this. The male has been neglected by every facet of society while the female has been artificially elevated for achieving nothing tangible other than her biological functions. What do you think of that, women? Ain't it the truth? You have done fucking dick all other than do what you instinctually do devoid of your own achievement or your own efforts and you simply fulfill your biological functions like going to the bathroom you're being rewarded for taking a crap in society So no wonder that men are just a little bit perturbed. No wonder that there's, and you women love this term, inequality. Yes, there is inequality, but not the way you deceivingly pro project it and the way you uh, 
inflict your lie, your great big lie, on the entire male population. Not like that. There is great inequality. And this is why. This is what the equality is. You're artificially, artificially elevated for doing nothing more than your biological functions. While men are not appreciated or praised for all their achievements. So there's disdain in every man for every woman, underlyingly. Misogyny. Well, this is where it comes from. This is where it comes from. There is no, there is no equality. This is where it comes from. Do you? Are you surprised? Um. And the great big lie of inequality is again um, the ultimate deflection of the wrongs that are emanated from the female, from female nature. Female the natural manipulator is being manipulated herself and she loves it. She's being lied to and she loves it. Now what kind of a immoral and shameless creature would love being manipulated? She's wallowing like a swine in attention. She's being catered to and pampered to, making her, unlike males in their constant shaming and criminalization regarding their nature, she's made immune and sheltered from any negative fallout from her biological imperatives. Unlike the male, which is constantly being shamed and criminalized for his male nature. The male was built to inseminate as many women as he can have access to and that he can attract. He was built to do that, yet he is shamed and criminalized because of it. All the laws are according to gynocentric rule. Women dictate how men will act or how they are allowed to act and behave according to the female code of behavior. Uh, in short, she will conform as long as she is not judged. She will conform. She will be allowed to be manipulated as long as she is not judged and not held accountable for the way she is. The almighty whore is conducting her enterprising universal exchange with the state as her female gender alone brings her privilege and indulgence. Let me read that again. The almighty whore is conducting her enterprising universal exchange with the state as her female gender alone brings her privilege, privilege and indulgence. Her female gender alone brings her all of these goodies. 
The female whore makes her ultimate exchange with the state and commerce as she is elevated to become largely blameless and without fault and is granted self-regulating rights, achieving capitulation from every facet of society. Now that's good value. It's as good a value as Alex on life is for a dollar a month. The ultimate exchange, which brings the female dominance and supremacy in every aspect of Western society. So that's what she gets in exchange. They need her vote and they need her purchasing power and their need and they need her manipulation no uh, abilities upon the entire male population so they know that if they can get the women they don't have to give a shit about any men they have the men Society itself is shaped by the agency of her whims, delusions, her fears, her insecurities, and narcissism. This is an important line. Society itself is shaped by the agency of her whims, delusions, fears, insecurities, and narcissism. She is given every advantage, oversight, indulgence, and leniency to have free reign over her historically alleged male oppressor. Her conveniently and shamelessly accused abuser. Every male on the face of the earth is her alleged abuser. And if you dare judge, you are being abusive. Her part of the exchange is to select into political power those who permit female nature to be seen favorably to those forces who ignore her true nature and agree not to expose her for the but to perpetuate her masquerade and her scam. That's her part of the exchange. To select into political power those who permit female nature to be seen favorably and who ignore her true nature and agree to expose her. Uh, agree not to expose her. Not to expose her. The female is in partnership with any entity which will not expose her and which will give moral license to her proclivities. Moral license. She has been given moral license to do what she does. Destroy. Create havoc. Be it church or state or any individual around her. This is what the female means when she utters the words support and understanding. That's what she means. She means don't judge me. Don't judge me for my female nature. Don't judge me. She is saying, don't judge me. I know I am dirty. A dirty whore. But it's the only way I know to be. I'm limited in my behavior and my functioning. And furthermore, I cannot feel guilty for it. 
she's unable to feel guilty for it. See, this is this is the situation she lives under. That she literally can commit any act and not feel guilt for it. It's it's a very sick way to live. So she says, make me feel good about it because intellectually and morally, I know I am dirty. I'm a dirty whore, but I am not capable. I am not emotionally capable of feeling bad about it. This in itself is the mechanism of diversion. The diversion of female accountability for behavior that she does not feel emotionally, she does not feel it emotionally due to her diminished conscience. There is no emotional component to a woman's behavior. There is no emotional component to a woman's behavior. This is the greatest component of male superiority as an individual, as a much more highly refined individual is what the male is. Along with conscience come a whole host of other qualities such as pride and honor which are also missing from the female constitution. When God made Eve from superfluous parts of Adam, many components were left out. The female is a much more primitive and less developed and much more primal creature. Exposing this is what brings, not guilt, but shame to the female. What you're doing is you're exposing this. That she's an incomplete, undeveloped human being compared to the male. And she doesn't want to hear that. She doesn't want anybody to know that. Women hide. Women shove things under the rug. Women ignore things. Women pretend things never happened. Women don't disclose things. That's the way they have to live. That's the way they live every moment. under their immorality and immorality comes from emotional insincerity there cannot be immorality if you're sincere about what you do but they can't be sincere about the things that they do that's why they are by default immoral they're born immoral biblically they're immoral they were created immoral. What does it say on the walls of the gym? No judgment zone, dude. No judgment zone. Hear that? The girls will be very upset. And for good reason. In ancient history, men knew this. Nothing has changed. Governments come, governments go. Regimes come, regimes go. Ideal ideologies come, ideologies go. Female nature is immutable. It never changes. It has never changed. The female is a much more primitive and less developed, a primal creature, basically a wild animal. 
when you think about it. A wild animal with a brain who can hide what they really are, who can hide and manipulate things uh, their, their way through life. Uh, the female uh, exposing this is what brings not guilt but shame to the female. The female instinctually is always aware of her inferiority. This is the inferiority complex of the female, knowing that she's underdeveloped compared to the male. <clears throat> the female instinctually is always aware of her inferiority, not in terms of physical ability or even intellectual ability, but in terms of moral capacity. The female is innately a crude and more primitive creature inside compared to the male but she is dressed up in the trappings of an angel to show the total diametrically opposed image of who she really is stripped naked. To show the total diametrically opposed image of who she really is stripped naked. She's driven biologically, is permitted to be completely self-indulgent, yet is always conflicted morally. She's always conflicted morally. This is why she must keep up her facade perpetually. This is the perpetual condition of the female that she lives under. Similar to the persistent sexual arousal of the male, similar to the persistent sexual arousal of the male, the female is also driven by bio biological forces largely beyond her control and this is her hypergamy. Missing from the male is this conditionality of association devoid of emotional sensibility. Missing from the male, the male is missing this conditionality of association when he gets into a, a relationship, uh, which is devoid of emotional, uh, uh, the, for, for the female, it's devoid of emotional sensibility. Emotions don't act, don't enter into the act. It's feigned. It's used as, a, as, a, as a, an entrapment, a provocation to bring the male into the relationship. Temptation, to bring temptation onto the male. The whore is truly the one who objectify, ob objectifies her target. It's the whore who objectify, objectifies her target. Her dupe. That's her target, her dupe. The male is, is accused in objectifying the female in terms of physical factors. This is not even true because the male is never limited to physical attraction alone. This is a very common, convenient, and a deflection of female immorality. That the male objectifies the female on physical features alone. No. The male is looking for a lot more than a female who is physically attractive. That is not enough for the male. But women conveniently, and in terms of deflecting their own immorality, want to accuse the male of being superficial as that. <clears throat> when a female uses deflection the truth always lies in a diametric 
opposition of what the female is projecting onto her objectified and abused target. Deflection is a very useful mechanism by which the female avoids detection of her immorality. The male is looking for a lot more girls than the physical. This walking whore among us, our family members, our affirmative, uh, affirmatively appointed workmates and superiors, our spouses, our neighbors, church members, etc., are continually engaged in a perpetual act of this acts of this deception against us by using deflection. The female must portray herself as something different because she is aware that she is continually walking a fine line between gain and shame. The scan the female is running cannot afford to be discovered. To be discovered is to be shamed. The female lives in a perpetual underlying shame. Not guilt. Never guilt. She's not guilty of anything she's ever done. She doesn't even own up to it. It's shame that she's afraid of. The female lives in a perpetual underlying shame. The male does not. Anyone who acts out of insincerity by default and as a reflex mechanism is by nature living under constant fear of detection resulting in shame and the, de and the termination of her immoral procuring endeavors. Immoral procuring endeavors. That's what she's engaged in. The female is perpetually enterprising, such as any whore, such as any whore. You see the parallels? No female will ever do or be in any association if there is no gain for her own personal thriving. If her intentions are discovered, they are nullified. Thus her efforts at detection of her behavior and motives. Thus her efforts at deflection of her behavior and motives. Deception by the female is necessary to disguise her precarious vulnerability. The female knows that she can either fall or she can flourish. Nothing in between. If the female is to be moral and less narcissistic means the inaccessibility and the una unattainability of her objectives and her self-thriving destination. If the female is to be less narcissistic. She will not have access and she will not attain her gains. Hence, the so, more, so many nawalts, not all women are like that out there. Virtually every woman who is questioned or accused of the less than endearing qualities of her female nature denies being identified. And guilty as such and averts incrimination by explaining that some women are like that but not me. We've heard that before. A deflection again of her accountability and an avoidance of shame. 
Most females were, will distance themselves from female nature and will use deflection for the purpose of both self-deception and public deception. But most directly, the deception of her proposed partner. She will always imply purity and innocence. It's at the underpinning of her false self-presentation of the contradictory image of innocence and morality. So the contradictory image of, of innocence and morality is the underpinning of her false self-presentation. For a female, her projected image and her self-identity does not match her behavior, her objectives, and her past history. So, for the female, her projected image and her self-identity does not match her behavior, her objectives, and her past history. You don't really know who you're dealing with. This is a great source of confusion, bewilderment, and astonishment for every male who is honest and has the fortitude to admit it. This mismatch between image and who she really is, this is what I'm saying here, this mismatch is the source of confusion, bewilderment, and astonishment for every male. The emotional insincerity and identity deflection of the female is the source of male precariousness, uncertainty, fear of unpredictability and a constant source of male insecurity. You basically don't trust them is what I'm saying. How can any male be blamed for being jealous? It is not simply unfounded jealousy but insecurity provoked by a creature who is totally unpredictable and does not function by emotions or from the heart, while the male does. This is the inequity between the two genders. And this is why the male always live, always must live every moment under the state of insecurity about the female. If the female has any options, then the male will always be insecure. And it's not an easy way to live. Any female will spontaneously and instinctively resist the exposure of her nature. What others think of her is of paramount importance to the female. Her public image is contrived and must be maintained at all times. This is precipitated by uh, both by her fear of shame if exposed and more importantly the termination and nullification of her mighty game. The nullification of her game if she is exposed. She's no longer, if she's no longer seen as a victim, her game is nullified. And her gains disappear or become inaccessible. Her gains become inaccessible. Her thievery, her extortion becomes nullified. It all hinges on her public image and the image she portrays to her prospective partner. The female is born to project her facade. She's born knowing this. It's instinctual. 
Females were, will deflect the detection and the exposure of their own female nature and behavior responses as fabricated and interpreted by only pathological males. Okay, so she will, uh, women will deflect the detection and exposure of their, of their true self and their behavior responses as nothing more than being fabricated and interpreted by only pathological males, by only those who are pathological males, okay? Misogynist males or males who have been traumatized and as a result have become pathological. This is another means or, or another example of deflection. This is deflection of detection and exposure. By, by shaming males into being pathological and misogynist. The female must portray herself as something different because she is aware that she's continually walking a fine line between gain and shame. The woman gave in to the serpent and the man gave in to the woman. This is going way back to the very beginning, right at the creation of man. And it's still going on till this day. It's something spiritual. She made a deal with the serpent. Now, if that doesn't define female nature, I don't know what does.